Alcuin of York, Latin, Flaccus Albinus Alcuinus, c. 735 the 19th of May 804 AD also called Eelwine, Alwyn or Alquan, was an English scholar, clergyman, poet and teacher from York, Northumbria. He was born around 735 and became the student of Archbishop Egbert at York. At the invitation of Charlemagne, he became a leading scholar and teacher at the Carolingian court, where he remained a figure in the 780s and 90s. Alcuin wrote many theological and dogmatic treatises, as well as a few grammatical works and a number of poems. He was made abbot of Tours in 796, where he remained until his death, the most learned man anywhere to be found. According to Einhard's Life of Charlemagne, ca. 817 to 833, he is considered among the most important architects of the Carolingian Renaissance. Among his pupils were many of the dominant intellectuals of the Carolingian era. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> 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 Background Alcuin was born in Northumbria, presumably sometime in the 730s. Virtually nothing is known of his parents, family background, or origin. In common hagiographical fashion, the Vita Alcuini asserts that Alcuin was of noble English stock, and this statement has usually been accepted by scholars. Alcuin's own work only mentions such collateral kinsmen as Wilgels, father of the missionary Saint Willibrord, and Bjornrad also spelled Bjornrad, abbot of Ecternach and bishop of Sens. Willibrord, Alcuin and Bjornrad were all related by blood. In his life of Saint Willibrord, Alcuin writes that Wilgels, called a Potterfamilias, had founded an oratory and church at the mouth of the Humber, which had fallen into Alcuin's possession by inheritance. Because in early Anglo-Latin writing paterfamilias, head of a family, householder, usually referred to a CEORL, Donald A. Bullo suggests that Alcuin's family was of Sirlisk status, i.e., free but subordinate to a noble lord, and that Alcuin and other members of his family rose to prominence through beneficial connections with the aristocracy. If so, Alcuin's origins may lie in the southern part of what was formerly known as Dara. Topic. York The young Alcuin came to the Cathedral Church of York during the Golden Age of Archbishop Eckbert and his brother, the Northumbrian King Eadbert. Eckbert had been a disciple of the Venerable Bede, who urged him to raise York to an archbishopric. King Eadbert and Archbishop Eckbert oversaw the re-energizing and re-organization of the English Church, with an emphasis on reforming the clergy and on the tradition of learning that Bede had begun. Eckbert was devoted to Alcuin, who thrived under his tutelage. The York School was renowned as a center of learning in the liberal arts, literature, and science, as well as in religious matters. It was from here that Alcuin drew inspiration for the school he would lead at the Frankish court. He revived the school with the trivium and quadrivium disciplines, writing a codex on the trivium, while his student Riban wrote one on the quadrivium. Alcuin graduated to become a teacher during the 750s. His ascendancy to the headship of the York School, the ancestor of St. Peter's School, began after Albert became Archbishop of York in 767. Around the same time Alcuin became a deacon in the church. He was never ordained a priest. Though there is no real evidence that he took monastic vows, he lived as if he had. In 781, King Elfwald sent Alcuin to Rome to petition the Pope for official confirmation of York's status as an archbishopric and to confirm the election of the new archbishop, Einbald I. On his way home he met Charlemagne, whom he had met once before, this time in the Italian city of Parma. Charlemagne Alcuin's intellectual curiosity allowed him to be reluctantly persuaded to join Charlemagne's court. He joined an illustrious group of scholars that Charlemagne had gathered around him, the mainsprings of the Carolingian Renaissance, Peter of Pisa, Paulinus of Aquileia, Rado, and Abbot Fulrad. Alcuin would later write that 
the Lord was calling me to the service of King Charles. Alcuin became master of the palace school of Charlemagne in Aachen in 782. It had been founded by the king's ancestors as a place for the education of the royal children mostly in manners and the ways of the court. However, Charlemagne wanted to include the liberal arts and, most importantly, the study of religion. From 782 to 790, Alcuin taught Charlemagne himself, his sons Pepin and Louis, as well as young men sent to be educated at court, and the young clerics attached to the palace chapel. Bringing with him from York his assistants Piddel, Sigewulf, and Joseph, Alcuin revolutionized the educational standards of the palace school, introducing Charlemagne to the liberal arts and creating a personalized atmosphere of scholarship and learning, to the extent that the institution came to be known as the School of Master Albinus. In this role as advisor, he took issue with the emperor's policy of forcing pagans to be baptized on pain of death, arguing, Faith is a free act of the will, not a forced act. We must appeal to the conscience, not compel it by violence. You can force people to be baptized, but you cannot force them to believe. His arguments seem to have prevailed. Charlemagne abolished the death penalty for paganism in 797. Charlemagne gathered the best men of every land in his court, and became far more than just the king at the center. It seems that he made many of these men his closest friends and counselors. They referred to him as David, a reference to the biblical king David. Alcuin soon found himself on intimate terms with Charlemagne and the other men at court, where pupils and masters were known by affectionate and jesting nicknames. Alcuin himself was known as Albinus or Flaccus. While at Aachen, Alcuin bestowed pet names upon his pupils, derived mainly from Virgil's Eclogues. According to the Encyclopaedia Britannica, he loved Charlemagne and enjoyed the king's esteem, but his letters reveal that his fear of him was as great as his love. Topic: <laughs> Return to Northumbria and back to Francia. In 790, Alcuin returned from the court of Charlemagne to England, to which he had remained attached. He dwelt there for some time, but Charlemagne then invited him back to help in the fight against the adoptionist heresy which was at that time making great progress in Toledo, the old capital of the Visigoths and still a major city for the Christians under Islamic rule in Spain. He is believed to have had contacts with Beatus of Liabana, from the Kingdom of Asturias, who fought against adoptionism. At the Council of Frankfurt in 794, Alcuin upheld the orthodox doctrine against the views expressed by Felix of Urgell, an heresiarch according to the Catholic Encyclopedia. Having failed during his stay in Northumbria to influence King Æthelred in the conduct of his reign, Alcuin never returned home. He was back at Charlemagne's court by at least mid-792, writing a series of letters to Æthelred, to Heigbald, Bishop of Lindisfarne, and to Æthelhard, Archbishop of Canterbury in the succeeding months, dealing with the Viking attack on Lindisfarne in July 793. These letters and Alcuin's poem on the subject, De Clade Lindisfarnensis Monastery, provide the only significant contemporary account of these events. In his description of the Viking attack, he wrote, Never before has such terror appeared in Britain. Behold the church of St. Cuthbert, splattered with the blood of God's priests, robbed of its ornaments. <laughs> Tours and death In 796 Alcuin was in his sixties. He hoped to be free from court duties and upon the death of Abbot Ithurius of St. Martin at Tours, Charlemagne put Marmoutier Abbey into Alcuin's care, with the understanding that he should be available if the king ever needed his counsel. There he encouraged the work of the monks on the beautiful Carolingian minuscule script, ancestor of modern Roman typefaces. Alcuin died on 19 May 804, some ten years before the emperor, and was buried at St. Martin's Church under an epitaph that partly read, Dust, worms, and ashes now. Alcuin my name, wisdom I always loved, pray, reader, for my soul. The majority of details on Alcuin's life come from his letters and poems. 
There are also autobiographical sections in Alcuin's poem on York and in the Vita Alcuini, a life written for him at Ferriers in the 820s, possibly based in part on the memories of Sigwulf, one of Alcuin's pupils. Carolingian Renaissance figure and legacy Mathematician The collection of mathematical and logical word problems entitled Propositions ad Acuendos Juvenes Problems to Sharpen Youths is sometimes attributed to Alcuin. In a 799 letter to Charlemagne the scholar claimed to have sent certain figures of arithmetic for the joy of cleverness, which some scholars have identified with the propositions. The text contains about 53 mathematical word problems with solutions, in no particular pedagogical order. Among the most famous of these problems are, four that involve river crossings, including the problem of three anxious brothers, each of whom has an unmarried sister whom he cannot leave alone with either of the other men lest she be defiled problem 17, the problem of the wolf, goat, and cabbage problem 18, and the problem of the two adults and two children where the children weigh half as much as the adults." Problem 19. Alcuin's sequence is the solution to one of the problems of that book. <laughs> <laughs> Literary influence Alcuin made the Abbey School into a model of excellence and many students flocked to it. He had many manuscripts copied using outstandingly beautiful calligraphy, the Carolingian minuscule based on round and legible uncial letters. He wrote many letters to his English friends, to Arno, Bishop of Salzburg and above all to Charlemagne. These letters of which 311 are, extant are filled mainly with pious meditations, but they form an important source of information as to the literary and social conditions of the time and are the most reliable authority for the history of humanism during the Carolingian age. Alcuin trained the numerous monks of the abbey in piety, and it was in the midst of these pursuits that he died. Alcuin is the most prominent figure of the Carolingian Renaissance, in which three main periods have been distinguished. In the first of these, up to the arrival of Alcuin at the court, the Italians occupy a central place, in the second, Alcuin and the Anglo Saxons are dominant, in the third, from 804, the influence of Theodulf, the Visigoth is preponderant. Alcuin also developed manuals used in his educational work, a grammar and works on rhetoric and dialectics. These are written in the form of dialogues, and in two of them the interlocutors are Charlemagne and Alcuin. He wrote several theological treatises, a De Fide Trinitatis, and commentaries on the Bible. Alcuin is credited with inventing the first known question mark, though it didn't resemble the modern symbol. Alcuin transmitted to the Franks the knowledge of Latin culture which had existed in Anglo Saxon England. A number of his works still exist. Besides some graceful epistles in the style of Venantius Fortunatus, he wrote some long poems, and notably he is the author of a history in verse of the church at York, verses de Petribus, Regibus et Sanctus Eborosensis Ecclesia. <laughs> Use of homoerotic language in writings According to David Clark, passages in some of Alcuin's writings display homosocial desire, even possibly homoerotic imagery. However, Clark says it is not possible to determine whether they were the result of an outward expression of erotic feelings. Historian John Boswell cited this as a personal outpouring of Alcuin's internalized homosexual feelings. Others agree that Alcuin at times comes perilously close to communicating openly his same-sex desires," and this reflects the erotic subculture of the Carolingian monastic school, but also perhaps a «queer space» where «erotic attachment and affections may be safely articulated». Erotic and religious love are intertwined in Alcuin's writings, and he frequently «eroticizes his personal relationships to his beloved friends». 
Alcuin's friendships also extended to the ladies of the court, especially the Queen Mother and the King's daughters, though David Bromel is of the opinion that Alcuin's relationships with these women never reached the intense level of those of the men around him. Alcuin was a close friend of Charlemagne's sister Gisela, abbess of Chelles, whom he hailed as a noble sister in the bond of sweet love. He wrote to Charlemagne's daughters Retrudus and Bertha that the devotion of my heart specially tends towards you both because of the familiarity and dedication you have shown me." His nickname for Gisela was Julia, for Retrudus Columba. He dedicated the last two books of his commentary on John's Gospel to them both. The interpretation of homosexual desire has been disputed by Alan Franzen, who identifies Alcuin's language with that of medieval Christian amicidia or friendship. Carl Leersch, in his 1880 inaugural dissertation, cites several passages from poems by Theodulf of Orleans. In these poems Theodulf reports that Alcuin had a female muse named Delia at the king's court she was probably Charlemagne's daughter. Delia is also the addressee of several poems by Alcuin, Douglas Dales and Rowan Williams say. The use of language drawn by Alcuin from the Song of Songs transforms apparently erotic language into something within Christian friendship and ordained affection. Despite inconclusive evidence of Alcuin's personal passions, he was clear in his own writings that the men of Sodom had been punished with fire for sinning against nature with men, a view commonly held by the Church at the time. Such sins, argued Alcuin, were therefore more serious than lustful acts with women, for which the earth was cleansed and revivified by the water of the flood, and merit to be withered by flames unto eternal barrenness. <laughs> <laughs> Legacy In several churches of the Anglican Communion, Alcuin is celebrated on the 20th of May, the first available day after the day of his death, as Dunstan is celebrated on the 19th of May. Alcuin College, one of the colleges of the University of York, England, is named after him. Topic: <laughs> Quotations. Quadpropter potius animum curare memento, quam carnum, quonium haec mane, illa parit. Remember to care for the soul more than the body, since the former remains, the latter perishes. Nec audiendi qui solent dicere, vox populi, vox dei, cum tumultuositas vulgi semper insanae proxima sit. And do not listen to those who keep saying, the voice of the people is the voice of God, because the tumult of the crowd is always close to madness. In the morning, at the height of my powers, I sowed the seed in Britain, now in the evening when my blood is growing cold I am still sowing in France, hoping both will grow, by the grace of God, giving some the honey of the holy scriptures, making others drunk on the old wine of ancient learning. Man thinks, God directs. Topic selected works for a complete census of Alcuin's works, see Marie-Hélène Julien and Françoise Perelman, eds, Clavis Scriptorum Latinorum Medi Aevi, Octoras Galliae 735-987. Tomus II, Alcuinus. Turnhout, Breppels, 1999. Poetry Carmina, ed. Ernst Dummler, M.G.H. Poetae Latini Aevi Carolini I. Berlin, Weidmann, 1881, 160-351. Godman, Peter, T.R., Poetry of the Carolingian Renaissance. Norman, University of Oklahoma Press, 1985. 118-49. Stella, Francesco, T.R., Com, La Poesia Carolingia, Firenze, La Letter, 1995, pp. 94-96, 152-61, 266-67, 302-07, 364-71, 399-404, 455-57, 474-77, 503-07. Isbell, Harold, T.R. The Last Poets of Imperial Rome. Baltimore, Penguin, 1971. Poem on York, Verses de Patribus, Regibus et Sanctus Euboricensis Ecclesia, ed., and T.R. P. 
Peter Godman, The Bishops, Kings, and Saints of York. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1982. De Clade Lindisfarnensis Monastery, On the Destruction of the Monastery of Lindisfarne Carmen 9, ed. Dummler, pp. 229–35, Epistoli letters of Alcuin's letters, just over 310 have survived. Epistoli, ed. Ernst Dummler, MGH Epistoli IV.2. Berlin, Weidmann, 1895. 1–493. Jaffe, Philip, Ernst Dummler, and W. Wattenbach, eds. Monumenta Alquiniana. Berlin, Weidmann, 1873. 132–897. Chase, Colin, ed. Two Alcuin Letter Books. Toronto, Pontifical Institute of Medieval Studies, 1975. Allot, Stephen, T. R. Alcuin of York, c. AD 732–804. His Life and Letters. York, William Sessions, 1974. Sturgeon, Thomas G., T.R. The Letters of Alcuin, Part 1, The Aachen Period 762–796. Harvard University Ph.D. Thesis, 1953, Didactic Worksers Grammatica. Place 101–854–902. De Orthographia, ed. H. Kyle, Grammatici Latini 7, 1880. 295–312, ed. Sandra Bruni, Alquino de Orthographia. Florence, SISMEL, 1997. De Dialectica. Place 101–950–76. Disputatio regalis et noblissimi juvenis Pippini cum Albino Scholastico Dialogue of Pepin, the most noble and royal youth, with the teacher Albinus, ed. L. W. Daly and W. Suhir, Altercatio Hadriani Augusti et Epictiti Philosophy. Urbana, IL, University of Illinois Press, 1939. 134–46, ed. Wilhelm Wilmans, Disputatio Regalis et Noblissimi Juvenis Pippini cum Albino Scholastico, Zeitschrift fur Deutsches Altertum 14, 1869, 530 55, 562. Disputatio de Rhetorica et de Virtutibus Sapientissimi Regis Carli et Albini Magistri, ed., and T.R. Wilbur Samuel Howell, The Rhetoric of Alcuin and Charlemagne. New York, Russell and Russell, 1965-1941, ed. C. Halm, Rhetorici Latini Minores. Leipzig, Teubner, 1863. 523-50. De Virtutibus et Vites Moral Treatise Dedicated to Count Widow of Brittany, 799 by 800. Place 101-613-39 Transcript available online. A new critical edition is being prepared for the Corpus Christianorum, Continuatio Medievalis. De anime ration ad eulalium virginem written for Gundrata, Charlemagne's cousin. Place 101-639-50. De cursu et saltu luna ac bisexto, astronomical treatise. Place 101-979-1002. Propositions ad acuendos iuvines, ed. Menso Fokertz, die Alteste Mathematische Aufgabensammlung in Lateinischer Sprache, die Alquine Zugeschriebenen Propositions ad Acuendos Iuvines, Überlieferung, Inhalt, Kritische Edition, in Item, Essays on Early Medieval Mathematics, The Latin Tradition. Aldershot, Ashgate, 2003, Theology Compendium in Canticum Canticorum, Alquino, Commento al Cantico dei Cantici, con i commenti anonimi vox ecclesi e vox antique ecclesi, ed. Rosana Guglielmetti, Firenze, SISMEL 2004 Quastiones in Genesum. Place 100-515-66. De fide sancte trinitatis et de incarnationi Christi, quaestiones de sancta trinitate ed. E. Nibs and E. An Matter, Corpus Christianorum, Continuatio Medievalis 249, Breppels, 2012, Hagiographi Vita II Vedastus Episcopi Atribatensis. Revision of the earlier Vita Vedastus by Jonas of Bobbio. Petrologia Latina 101 663 82. Vita Richeri Confessori Sentialensis. Revision of an earlier anonymous life. 
MGH Scriptors Rerum Merovingicarum 4 to 381 minus 401. Vita Willibrordi Archiepiscopi Traectensis, ed. W. Levison, Passiones Vitique Sanctorum Aevi Merovingici. MGH Scriptors Rerum Merovingicarum 7 to 81 minus 141. See also Propositions ad acuendos juvenes Carolingian art Carolingian empire Category – Carolingian period Correctory Codex Vindobonensis 795